Mappy. Welcome back to the Nightlife Podcast uh, again from Brickell, Bar Seco in Brickell. And today, bro, believe it or not, I, I thought this day was never going to come. Um, these guys you see around me are my partners in crime and in business if the two don't go together. So starting from my right all the way to my left, we have, what's your name again? My name is Alan Diaz. Is it really? <laughs> we got Alan. Alan, what's your um, Instagram so people it's can follow you? Adan Alejandro. A Adan Alejandro. Gustavo Quilla. Gustavo. Julio's older partner. <laughs> and when he says older, he means he's the older guy in the group. Um, and the little baby. Diaz. What's your name? Christian Diaz. And Christian Diaz. Is that your no. Instagram? Chris Benja 11. So at Chris Benja 11. Um, all right, so the four of us are what you guys know as LMG Miami, um, oh, the main part of the team. So we're going to have a discussion today um, about what happens behind the scenes before a party um, starts, basically. What, what people don't get to see, anybody that's not in the business and, and goes out to a party, what is it that they don't see that goes on before? And anybody that's in the business, uh, especially from the promotion marketing side, what is it they have to do? So any promotion company or any promoter, what are all the things that somebody needs to do in order to get a party uh, going on? And you know, we're gonna talk a little about that and about what we do and how we get it all, all you know, all set up and done. And we'll touch a little bit at the end of the episode on also from the venue side of the business. You know what the GM does or the owner, and you know every little piece. So first things first. Um, any thoughts that you guys have? What what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you're thinking? Okay, you're gonna start a new party. Which, by the way, we're gonna start a new party on on this Friday, and we're gonna unveil the party tonight at 8 p.m. Actually, tonight is not today. You're getting you're seeing this tomorrow. So tonight was yesterday. <laughs> so. Uh, we're gonna unveil it uh, at 8 p.m. all together with the whole team of promoters. Um, we've, we've been done. A, we've been doing a little pre um, amping up the people. Teaser. Show, teasers. There you go. We're, we've been teasing people with a, a few pictures and a few, you know, uh, messages and a little bit of music of what's to come uh, starting this Friday. So, what you know, let's let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what what is all the things that we've been having to do? prior to getting this party started? What, what well, do you what A do you lot say? of organization, um, a lot of ideas, putting them all together. Right. Debating on what to do, um, how the staff is gonna work together, um, all those type of things. Right. So what, what would you think, Guilla, that is the first thing that you have to do in the whole process of putting the whole thing together? What, what would that first thing be? It all begins in picking the right place. I, I really believe is we like to do places that nobody has done before. So um, for us, it's just, it's all about challenges. We like to do different things. Right. Uh, in this case, the place we're choosing right now, it's, it's gonna be a new challenge. It's something that we haven't done in a while. Um, we just work, it happens, I mean. Right, we and just, but, but, but when he says nobody's done it before, what he means is it's a venue that, that no other company has thrown a party at the venue. So it, this is a, a new venue. Um, it's been open for a few months, but they haven't done any any kind of party. We're gonna throw what uh, what we see in the business as a dinner party that grows into a into a late night party. Uh, we actually start from the happy hour and all that kind of stuff because it, it is gonna be on, on Friday nights. Happy hours are good on Fridays. So yeah, so so he's saying looking for a venue, and and actually that's people sometimes forget about that, and what they do is. Somebody calls them and says, I have a place, do you want to grab this night? And they just say yes, right away. People don't think about Correct. it, how many options do I have? Correct. You know, what am I going to be able to do at this venue? Weigh um, the options. Exactly, yeah. weigh all the options and all that. And as a matter of fact, this venue that we're talking about uh, on Friday, even though at the end we all came together and said, okay, so this is the right choice, and we had... It took a while. It took us a long time. Yeah, of course. I mean, yes. and when we say a while, it means over two months to make the decision of this is the venue that we're gonna go with. Uh, so you guys understand, before this party that's gonna happen in three days, we were planning two months ahead. 
Okay. So, uh, with that said, uh, if you can see, Christian likes to talk a lot. So, <laughs> with that said, what what would you say, Chris? Is the next thing right after picking the correct venue and knowing that everybody's on the same page that we're gonna do that one round? Well, I think um, <clears throat> the next step is doing a soft opening and a grand opening. All right. So, so soft opening for those of you that don't understand is kind of uh, a day where you test the waters in a way. So we sometimes believe that having a soft opening is positive and sometimes it's not. It depends. And it all really depends on the venue. Okay, so we go with soft opening when a venue is something completely new and different to what we normally do, uh, which is the case uh, on, in, in this Bar, lounges. Exactly. Nightclubs, you go all out. Exactly. So exactly. if we're going to open a nightclub, if we were to open, yes. uh, say, a place like, like Bloom here, like Live on the beach, like anything big and, and energetic, it would Maria be a different time. story. Because we, we would know, okay, so it's a grand opening. You go, you know, the word grand opening, you know, says it all. It's grand. You got to go all in, uh, make sure that you have all your people there, all your promoters working, all that kind of stuff. The difference between that and what we're gonna do this week, which is a soft opening, is we're bringing what some people call friends and family. So all our friends, all, all our family, um, friends of friends and our best or closest clients. Uh, so we know right ahead that it's not gonna be a huge night as to maybe the amount of people that will be there, even though we are adding uh, an event this week, which is Christian's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Um, but, um, so, that way, we get to test the venue. We get to see if the venue is ready for what we're gonna bring the following week. Okay, so this is something we're gonna do every Friday, um, and we we're hoping to make sure that during the soft opening, when we have our closest people, we can fix it. All right. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. Good. Exactly. So yes. before the soft opening happens, and before the grand opening happens, if that's the way the route that you decide to go, we. Um, there's a whole process of creation also, you know? Yes. Kind of what Adam was, was talking about. Um, and it's, it goes into, you know, what are we gonna do uh, marketing-wise, for example? Uh, which way are we gonna promote it? What target, are, target, you know, what is the correct target for this venue? Um, are the promoters in our team into, the, into this? As a matter of fact, so you know, we don't involve the sub-promoters in the decision of the venue it, itself. But we involve them as, you know, like right now, like today is the day that we're going to bring out what the venue is. And it's also the day that we're telling all our sub-promoters in our meeting that this is what we're going to be doing uh, starting this week. Because we've been keeping this very um, hermetic, very close, very private. Um, sometimes when you tell the wrong people, um, things get out and you don't want the information to get out of this business. Right. It's very secretive uh, and you need to control that. Sometimes it's not because people want to say it just to hurt you or whatever. It's just that uh, everybody's friends with somebody that works for the competition and somebody might mention something and it gets to the wrong person and you never know. You end up losing the contract for whatever reason. Somebody comes and offers something different and when you have uh, lies or whatever or you just get that negative energy that is always Or they'll there. do a concert right on the day or we were opening. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. And just and we've seen that happen a lot. Which, by the way, it's, all, it's also, you know, it's a tip. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes. a lot of people try to compete uh, with others by trying to hurt them and doing things outside of their comfort zone. Like maybe throwing a concert when you shouldn't be throwing a concert with not enough time preparation, maybe at the wrong venue. Different things, money, usually the the reason why, and usually the reason why it's not correct either. Because at the end, you'll end up not making money to try to make somebody else not make money for that night. And uh, we were having a conversation before this, uh, before the, the episode, and it was really about that, about the fact that we basically concentrate on making our nights better, uh, on, on working, on bringing positive things, not just, you know, what do you call it? Um, not trying to hurt others. Right. You know, competition needs to be, right, it just needs to be clean. We worry about There's ourselves money. first. There's money for everybody too. So exactly. It's basically, you're exactly. So just that if you have money, come spend it with us. First. Right. Um, <laughs> so, um, all right, so, so part of the preparation, um, flyers, social media, of course. Definitely. 
Um, you know, and it all depends. Most of you are probably working your own social media. So, uh, 2019 influencers. Yes, influencers, uh, 100%. A lot of video. Um, yes. And that's that's one of the big things is influencers. And remember, we've spoken about this uh, in the previous episode. Actually, we spoke about influencers. And one of the main things that you need to concentrate on is look for somebody that actually influences the target that you are going for. You know, it's not about having a lot of followers, it's about having the correct, the right type of followers. You don't need somebody with 8 million followers in Venezuela if you're here in Miami and, the, and your clientele is not that, if you're catering to a different uh, one. So, so, so look at that, the demographic and the reality of who follows those people first. And of course, the money value of what you really get in return. And the best tool? Cell phone, guys. Your phone? Yeah. This is key. This is the main weapon. If you're yes. not making phone Personals, calls, yeah. text, today, social media, you handle it from there. Um, you know, even video. Most people are producing video on their phones, you know. So almost everything that you're going to be doing, it's actually going to be through the phone. Yes. Um, we believe a mistake that promoters are making and a misperception from their side is they believe by posting something on social media, they think everybody's gonna follow or everybody's gonna show up. And that's just a reminder. You need to be yes. a little bit more per personal. Right. Basically making calls, actually writing to people and stuff like that. Yes. Right, right. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a little uh, kind of trick in a way of the way that I, um, let's say, pre-produce an event or the way that I see it in my mind. And I said, and it's, and it's pretty much um, like if you think of taking a shower and getting ready in the morning, um, I kind of do a little bit of that. So, so, so you know the way you take a shower, and most people know also even when they're gonna dry themselves with a the towel, they know <laughs> where the towel goes first. And That's where it kind goes of last. personal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, but you don't think about it when you get the, the next time that you use the towel. Uh, what was the last thing you cleaned? Um, but um, in, in the end, with the, with the throne of a party, you know, it's like getting dressed in a way. Yes. You get dressed and you put your underwear first, and then you, you, you know, well, whatever. Whatever your order is, is your order. Yeah. You know, I put my underwear first, and you then go I go from the inside around. out. In a club, you go from the outside in. Exactly. That's the way we see it. Exactly. Yes. So, so, so we start with what we just spoke about right now. <laughs> what we just spoke about, which is the outside. Correct. And the outside yes. for us starts from far away, from Valley days Park. before, so yeah. getting everything ready. So now that we spoke about, okay, so we're getting ready with the production and the, you know, but we didn't actually, we spoke about the the marketing side of it, but we didn't talk production-wise. So we have to find different people that are going to be working for us. Yes. And, and in that case, one of the main things is music. Of course. Exactly. So the process of finding the correct DJ is very important. It goes target also, first with the target with the venue itself you know with the night of the week is this person available um, if you're a company that's been around for a long time it's very likely that you will have the DJs that follow you and work with you only um, and as a matter of fact I mean we've had Wheelie for 25 years <laughs> in the company yes. and we've had Christian you know for a while with us. Oh, wow. we've, we've had over a hundred DJs play for us in the 25 years uh, but those are you know like those guys have been with us um, maybe really the longest for sure. but exactly they, they follow the company wherever it goes and at this moment in time Friday new night generation will be also the launch kind of of a new DJ who's gonna be part of the family more often be yes. with us more nights and all that kind of stuff so it's kind of exciting in that sense because we're gonna be catering to a crowd that's been left behind and forgotten kind of. Everybody's excited about the kind of music we're gonna be playing and the kind of venue that we're gonna be at, uh, which is kind of upscale in a way. Um, I don't know if you're, we give details about we haven't, how we, haven't we see gone. it. I mean, like, when we plan an event, we, yeah. we basically, in our minds, we go through the experience of what our clients are gonna be exper experimenting that night. Exactly. Um, we basically start from the yeah, okay. valley parking. Yeah, exactly. Then we go, we move to the door. Then we go inside to, you know, to see the layout of the place. Then Stop. Well, let's, we let's, let's stop right there. So valet yeah. parking. What we're looking at valet parking is service. So do we have the? Do we have a good service? Yes. If the venue does not have good service, we we get the service. We have different valet companies yes. we bring into the table. So you guys need to have relationships with those. 
if there is no possibility of having a good valet, you need good parking. You need to make sure yes. that if you have a venue that holds a thousand people, that you have a venue that also holds 250 cars, so that you can have those 1,000 people. Even though you have Uber in, in areas like exactly. like Brickell yeah. or downtown and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and you know New York and all that is probably taxi and Uber 100. percent But um, but in most places you need parking if it's a place where people drive. Yes. Um, so yeah, so that's with the valet. Then the, at the door, so Reader. door you have uh, a few different parts of the door. Yes. So the front of the door, which is very important. A lot of venues have this part of the staff set and they already know who it is that works and it's, it works for them. But we like to bring somebody of our, of our own most of the time. Right. Um, ideally for two positions at the door uh, that are the cashier and, and the hostess. Yeah, hostess and the doorman. The one that's doing the actual yes. you know, guest list and seeing who brings, you know, what promoters bring home and all that kind of stuff. So, so you guys get paid later. Greetings. And greeting. But then the doorman, the doorman is one that we love to have on our team, but a lot of the venues have on their own. But um, it's very important that position. Because yes. that's the guy that's gonna make sure that the tables are sold that to right the right the in. right clients yes. and they're they're able to identify maybe more or less sometimes profiling a little bit who has money or who's, who's, who doesn't. Right. To see what you know how much you can get from a client. Right. It depends, you but, know, on the type of doorman you have. Right. And I know a lot of doormans are gonna hate this, but there's one thing that we uh that we like a lot and it's a door woman, door girl. Oh yes. When the, when the right door girl is doing the job, you know, it's and that door's unstoppable the sell. And shout outs to, to Sol, <laughs> who was the probably the first door Sol, girl to Paulina. do something crazy. So about you know, both of them did you know crazy stuff with the doors and it started a new uh, a generation of female doors. Um, but yeah, so Make sure that if they're not on your team, whoever the doorman is or door girl, if they're not on your team, make them part of your team. Or make sure that they're working with you, you're working together. And even if you have to put your, you know, your hands in your pocket a little bit, take care of them. Make sure that, that they're happy where they are, but they're also happy with you working. Um, yes. So, as there, then you get through that door, uh, you finally get through the ropes and you come into the venue. And what we cater, to the people is mostly the, the music part as a promotion company. If we were the venue, we'd have, we have to be thinking about liquor and staff and, and you know waitresses, hostess, you know the whole the whole shebang. But that would be a whole complete episode uh, with somebody like Gato. Yes. <laughs> um, today we're going to concentrate on the on the marketing side of the of the equation, the promoters. So. We need to figure out also where it is that we are gonna take care of our people. Right. So every venue is different, but we, you need to make sure that where you're gonna be taking care of your people is the correct part. And it all really yes. depends. Some venues have set, you know, very nice VIPs that are for the big spenders. You don't want to take that away from the big spenders if, if you have those big spenders. Yes. Uh, you don't have those big spenders, then you have that space available. It's good to be scene there because it kind of creates that vibe that whole you know it's a show kind of uh, uh, thing yeah very um, important location for the place yes I mean sometimes you can I mean if you're gonna do an ups, upscale type of party you need to choose a you know the right location for that right sometimes we choose maybe a wrong location for the upscale clientele and then you end up having a BC crowd and you don't reach the sales that you need to reach so that's, it's probably, you know, good advice to just pick the right location for that. Right. And, and again, location is going to vary according to the party that you have. Yes. Uh, you know, depending on the energy, you have, do you have tables at the dance floor? Do you have tables in the VIP only? Are tables all over the place? It all depends. Also, how many tables there are available because <clears throat> it, it, you know, for example, we have a team of 30 promoters right now, 30 sub promoters that work with LMG. And these guys, let's say that everybody had a great night and everybody came to the place with over 30 people and everybody sold tables and all the fucking 25 tables are sold. And what do you do? How do you make them have a table for all of them and all that? It's almost impossible. It doesn't really happen much, 
I mean, having 30 promoters show up with all producers at the same everybody time, everybody producing at the same very time, hard. very very difficult. Yes. Um, although we're going to be working on that, so I'm, I'm excited to see what's going to yes. happen when when everybody gets trained. But the whole process of you know getting the promoters sat at a good table or a table that they can cater to their friends and all that is very important. So you need to see this ahead of time. You go, you know, you also look at the beginning of the night, you, you need to know how many tables do I have reserved. Exactly. Um, and according to that, you, you already know, okay, so I'm gonna be pretty much sold out. I'm gonna have some tables available, how many tables. Then also you work on maybe mixing some of them. Let's say that if you have only two tables available and you have eight promoters that produce, you have an option of giving them the two tables, putting them four, four of them on one, four Make of them on another. Make them share on the table, yes. Or, exactly, sh sharing as a team, or or you have them sit with the clients that they're selling to, um, yes. which is ideal. I I ideally, they will be sitting with those clients, and whatever you're gonna give them as complimentary, um, they will use at yes. those tables. If you were, by the way, if you're the sub-promoter, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff, well, which is the beautiful part about the sub-promoter job. The sub-promoter job, all you really need to care about is doing the promotion, bringing the people, and and just taking care of them. Well, at the venue, taking care of them at the venue, making sure you know. Not part of the hosting part. Exactly. Concentrate on hosting and promoting, promoting and hosting. That's that's it. And the cycle goes around and around and around, and then you have the rest of the week to go to the beach, have a beautiful tan. <laughs> Train like Christian goes to the gym every day. Day <laughs> one, day one. Exactly, it's day one every week. Um, so, all right, so with that said, we come from the outside in. Look at the DJ. Um, some venues we don't feel comfortable enough with the way they operate. So maybe we get involved a little bit since we have own our yes. own venues. Um, you know, plenty of them. We know exactly what we need with the bar staff. Sometimes we recommend staff. Uh, actually, it's something that we're going to be doing with this with this venue that we're going to open now. After this week, we're most likely going to be bringing new people also to add to their team. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we, you know, I don't want to make this any you know much longer. But um, the the venue we're going to be opening, so you guys know, if you're here in Miami, it's called La Central. La Central is a Italian venue. It's 45,000 square feet, three floors, uh, on Brickell City Center, which is the new um, huge mall here in the city beautiful um, venue <clears throat> now the second floor of la central has a, a, a great looking bar rice mac in the middle with three beautiful restaurants around the size um, and we're going to be throwing the party around this bar and one of the restaurants at the beginning and then see if it grows to the other two and it's going to be very old school music wise and catered to a to a, a niche that people are not really taking care of too much. So, you know, if you're following LMG, which I know you do, you'll see where the party's at and we'll most likely see you guys um, over there. So, I don't know, if there's anything that you guys want to add, I know Christian didn't die in the top. <clears throat> Follow us, guys. <laughs> LMG Miami. Yeah, no, you, everybody here is following us, for sure, right now. But, um, and just making sure that everything works together by the way getting the the promoters excited pumped about the party is something that's very important too a lot of times promoters are forgotten maybe yes. you guys need to um, work something when maybe you have like competition amongst the uh, prices for those that that do better than others a lot of the times there might be somebody in the team that's just extremely good um, so you got to take those out of the equation <laughs> Make sure that they're getting treated well always. Taking but care of but if somebody's just out of the question and they're always gonna win contests that you have, you need to make sure that it's done a different way. Or maybe you do it um, where, for example, promoters that are you know like a percentage of whatever they were doing before, whatever their growth is, and you look at that who's growing the most, who's bringing more, you know. Um, it's all about production, yeah. Exactly, exactly. In the end, it's all about production, and we gotta do it as a team. Um, the company, if you guys are the main promoters, uh, the ones listening out there, you need to get behind the whole process with the venue, with management, with all that. By the way, right after the party, you got to start working already on next week. There's 52 weeks a year. And if you're a company like us, we have four parties a, a week. That means 200 and fucking eight parties a year. That is a lot of planning, a lot of preparation. 
and a lot of pumping up uh, people. So a lot of flyers get done, and, and believe me. Um, and that's why sometimes we run into stuff like this that took us two months to make a decision, but in the end, we're gonna start the party in three days. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to do a good job and we'll sh talk, tell you all about it. Um, so again, go follow LMG, get the book on Amazon and nightlifepodcast.com. You will find us, you get us on iTunes, on Automatic, on Spotify and YouTube. You find me at that nightlife entrepreneur on Instagram. And Adam Alejandro in Facebook and Instagram. Gustavo Quilla. Chris Benhound. We leave you with a lambada. <laughs> <laughs>